The night Bob Marley got shot. A revisit in the night when Bob Marley got shot by a dirty criminal, you know. Little most we don't have the legend, the reggae legend almost get cut down early. Viewers are sub. This goes to show all the badness go way back. Bad mind and jealousy and covetous was in the air. Also, there was a lot of political thing going on. But I'm telling you the chilling night when the dirty criminal walk up on Bob Marley, you know, man. Nesta Marley, the legend. And the boy back out a big old lot of gun and beat up round upon the superstar, you know. Beat up rounds upon the legend. You know, you hear the whole thing still, boy, I tell you. I feel a way. It sends shock wave all over in Jamaica. Yeah, man, people couldn't believe I was going. Thank God Bob Marley survived that attack. We don't hear the whole thing still. Saying, Ooh, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, uh-huh. Bag of things, they have to make a statement. If I know bag of things, TV, it don't make sense. A bag of things, TV, I run things all the time. Bag of things, they have to make a statement. If I know bag of things, TV, it don't make sense. A bag of things, TV, I run things all the time. Viewers are so bad at things. They are getting a big up on the self, you know. Yeah, yeah man, the 1976 assassination attempt on the great Bob Marley. Yeah, but he survived. Boy, then come for kill him, you know. And it was put on Bob Marley, Ed. And them said they want him dead, you know. You understand? We're going to some history, and we're going to hear what on. When we think of divisive figures in history, Reggae legend Bob Marley really tops the list. Throughout his career, the singer emphasized love for his fellow man, social justice, human rights, and peace. Despite his base way of looking at the world, Bob Marley nearly killed for his belief that people could and should be better. So how did a man so well known for chill beats, fondness of weed, and his love find himself at the end of a loaded gun. Boom, beat me to say, boy, then come for kill him, man. The man preach love, you know, peace, you know, unity. And just burn a sliff and go and build a vibes. Why them want to kill the legend? Bob Marley's story shows that even when you have no interest in politics, Politics still have an interest in you. Yo, politics, you know. Politics, I want wicked, you know. Remember, I'm telling you, know, these things will get you killed. Remember, if I'm a bad man, I'm jealous, you know. A politics, you know. Politics. Man, we take your life over politics. And in a Jamaica, every time, I tell you, say, if you wear a color shirt, if you wear a green shirt, the orange shirt, man, the PMP, they want to kill you. If you wear the orange shirt, the PMP shirt, the man where we are green, the labor right man they want to kill you. Yo, the place you used to run serious when it comes to politics in a man. Politics. And who benefit from it? Who benefit from politics? Or politics? The big chose is politician them. And Bob Marley now, as a great legend, singer, a preach, my preach love, you know? When the man they come for kill the man, you know? The man I preach love. Peace and unity. This goes to show us, you know, matter what you're doing in the world, you know. Even when you preach love, and you say, yo, my brothers, my sisters, my sisters, when you live up, saying, you have to find a dirty nigga who can come take your life, man. And a sudden drive you do it next time. You know? Thank God, King Selassie, I, Jehovah, Jairi, Hala. Any God who no one call that the night the boy God, God stand up in the room and say move from your so dirty nigga you never know, kill Bob Marley tonight I'm mad John no star me I tell him I feel a way I never did that you know. but when you're looking at it and you say boy you revisit the case you come like say boy I did the man when you go on how me feel it we could go in it again still why was there an assassination attempt on Bob Marley yeah why why would you want to kill him? During Bob Marley's lifetime, Jamaica was going through an extreme political upheaval. Originally a colony of United Kingdom, 
Jamaica finally achieved independence. Post World War II, moving towards its status as a country steering in the 1950s. As the political scene shifted, its landscape was defined by two rival groups the People's National Party, the Social Democratic Party, and the Jamaica Labour Party, its conservative counterpart. Why, me I tell you, man, politics, man. Bob Marley got getting and wet up in the night, man. Because he wants to see the two parties, they live good. You know? Bob Marley wants to see Jamaican people them come together and start making politics, politics take the life of the youth them on the street. Because where politicians then come around, come and do a tricky youth them, you know? trick up the youth them. See, Bob Marley never did know say it was a dangerous thing. He was putting on in there, you know. See, when you see Edward Siaga, you see now man, manly and them man, they a serious, vicious thing around them man, you know. Because you are dealing with a group of people where we kill you any day for them, for them leader, you know. And I saw Jamaica just run. Could go in night again, I couldn't hear what I go on. Because I tell you, say, them are sitting there nice, man. For when you look back and see how far we are come from. Boy, I tell you, boy. The tension between the groups led to exorbitant violence. Each was outsourcing violence to the rude boys. Them the time they remember say, we have a shatter them, you know. The top killers them and the top shatters them. The bleach out face boy them. A spin and rat chicken and all the part. Half dozen other pants them are wearing. You know. In a day time they you know. A rude boy they have enough. The rude boys them was very dangerous. Diamond socks. Spin them three star rat chick. The bleaching they come in and time still. The rude boy they need a bleach. But they head tie up and top the head with kerchief. You understand? And I wear gold teeth and them man is serious now blood teeth now. So guns and rounds are reaching road boys them. You know? The two political parties them are running for the road boys them. And I supply them with guns and rounds. Because they want to vote. A subject of Jamaican youth who were poor and discontented with their lives and needed the payouts to live. They are the road boys you now. Road boys. As the parties swap power through each election, the head of both the PMP and the JLP would demolish the neighborhoods the road boys came from, erecting headquarters of SAT. The road boys, they don't want nothing, man. Them is just a henchman, you know. And they are work for a big politician, you know. In a them the time, they I don't like no way scammer them and buy their own gun. The road boys, then can't buy their gun like that. So how oh, they get the guns, them bag of things with the TV? Very good question. Very good question. Let me answer that. The rude boys then get the guns them from the politician them. Uh, where they blood. Hey, who no better stop me right now? Who no better stop me because me about to talk on things where the bigger heads them no want me to see them something here. Me I tell us say, I will pa threat me I go get you now. Will pa letter I go reach me. Cause them no want me talk up them things there no man. You see me I say, but guess what now? Me I talk up the things them, me no care. Watch what I go on. By the 1970s, the groups were in open warfare using crime bosses and gangs as proxy warriors. The PMP, headed by Michael Manley, started openly support Fidel Castro and Cuba, Cuban communism. The JLP, headed by Edward Siaga, brag about the CIA supplying them with weapons. You see, I'll see him bomb buck. Hey. Excuse my language. You see, I'll see them United States. Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam in a whole heap of badness and foolishness. You know? Whole heap of corruption, man. Uncle Sam in a whole heap of corruption. We go on in a Jamaica, you know. I put them, put Edward C. I got them on them money in the country. And then with them, man. See? While them have CIA connection. Yo, me I tell you, a whole lot of things go on, man. Some, some born do the business go on in Jamaica then time, you know. Yeah, man. I plant them plant some of them leader there, you know. As me tell you already, you know, me I go talk of some things I don't know I go like, you know. A whole lot of people I go back with me, you know. But me still I talk, me no care. 
The JLP headed by Edward Siaga bragged about the CIA supplying them with weapons. The United States, which considered Jamaica to be its unofficial backyard, saw a political leader in open support of communism as a threat. As so now the United States decides to they might go attack Michael Manley. You know. Yeah, man. Because Michael Manley and Fidel Castro did a link. And the United States don't want that to go on. Boom, bad start. Would you give me some like for the video? Yo, right now, the things that I talk about right now, my life is in a danger. When I say, would you give me some like for the video? Because yeah. none of the big man right now no want to see that video. Yeah. I'm telling you something, you better watch that video yeah, real quick before they take it down. Them have video are too dangerous. You understand? Well, give me some like. I need at least 2,000 like. Because I risk my life for do them video here. So give me at least 2,000 like for one year. You see me as they don't want to talk up them something here, viewers and sub. Ladies and gentlemen, Ben Mommy tell you they don't want you guys to know about politics and politics. You see me as say? Poor little Bob Marley near you know. So they sitting there, wicked sitting there, getting himself in there. Boy, I tell him, I did it with Bob Marley for a reason with him. I show him, say, yo, here yeah, now, stay far from the politics. Stay far from the politics, you will get killed. Boy, I tell you, no, man, I could go in night again, I couldn't hear what I go on. The people are saying, no, boy, Jamaica turned upside down. The open warfare led to the death of nearly 900 people over the decade through both parties at one point or another. Try to mend bridges. Boy, I say people are drop like fly. All because of the political parties. Politics, man. One of the first attempts was made by Michael Manley Ministry of Culture, which tapped a number of reggae artists, including Bob Marley. A play at the free concert, Smile Jamaica. Marley had previously played at the Stevie Wonder's Wonder Dream concert which benefited blind children and liked the idea. He did have several stipulations. However, Bob Marley requested that the link to the PMP be downplayed since as a political neutral figure, he didn't like the idea that he would seem more or less sympathetic to either side of the political parties, PMP or JLP. You know what? It looks like a boy. He might go for another party, you know. Because Bob Marley was very neutral, you know. A peace Bob Marley saying, you know, at the time, you know. Bob Marley was saying love and unity, honor and respect. He never not push no badness and no war. See? So why they want to kill him? And that everybody asks, you know. That's the question, you know. His attempt were unsuccessful. However, his non-committal approach left many JLP supporters feeling that Bob Marley was tacitly complicit with the PMP. He had to please people, you know. Father God come down here and try to please people. And what they do with him? They end up putting him on the cross and, and, and crucify him, man. Bob Marley try to do some good things and see what they do with him. Then crucify him. How can you help people? How can you deal with mankind when mankind is so wicked? Oh, you, you can't please mankind. Not even God himself can please mankind sometimes. If your father fall rain, you hear some people, boy, too much rain. We get too much rain, man. You know, storm more sun. When they get the sun shine on the sun shine. Jesus, God, the time hot him, man. If we could have get like little shower of rain. <laughs> Yo, you can't please mankind, top Lord clean. Bob Marley tried it. And it didn't work out. It didn't work out. I tell you that. Straight up. Now we are talking about the night when Bob Marley gets shot, boy. I mean, I tell us, say, what a vicious night. Late on the evening of December the 3rd, 1976, several armed men raid Bob Marley's home. The exact number is hotly contested, with some believing that the attack was a work of at least seven people. A whole heap of people come for Bob Marley the night, you know? Everybody want to kill him. Yo, me I tell a man. And others claiming it to be around three. A whole person somebody come for him, man. The night the whole part dirty criminal come for take the man life. But God was standing at the door, you know. And God said, boy, I don't know how to kill a man today, you know. No, I don't know how to kill this man right in front of me, you know, you're mad. 
Dutch nigga will move first and go away. The boy they squeeze a couple rounds still you now. Here we go now. The home security detail was mysteriously missing that night and the attacker broke into the home with zero opposition. Dan Taylor, Bob Marley's manager, as well as Louis Griffiths, one of the band employees, were present at the home as well, despite the band being on a break from rehearsal. The boy then screeched up in a man, in the yard in a man, with the intention to assassinate the reggae legend. According to Tyrone Downey, the keyboardist for the whalers, the band had been working on I Shot the Sheriff when Bob Marley and Dan Taylor walk out of the recording studio. Yo, they're sitting here and look good, you know, this look like a setup, you know. Moments after the door left, a hand came through the door blindly, firing a 0 .38 pistol. Downey and the rest of the band, family man, Garley, Da Costa, and Dave Madden, hit the floor. And Downey remembers them crawling to the bathroom to hide. Some still carrying their instruments. Family man was standing with the bass. It was a small room, so everybody wasn't in there at the same time. Yo, I all them all escape right now because the criminal them are proceed towards them, you know, with guns in the hand, you know. Gun jar, gun pop out. Where Bob Marley there? Oh, you know, come back into the room where they're there. See? Because the man, a man did walk out first, you know. You understand? No, I could hear what they say going on now. In the other room with Bob Marley and Dan Taylor, guitarist Dan Kingsley witness what have been Bob Marley's last moment. According to Kinsey, a gunman armed with an automatic weapon spotted the trio in the kitchen. Jaja, oh my God. I hear so they might go down everybody I know. I could see what go on. According to Kingsley, a gunman armed with an automatic weapon spotted the trio in the kitchen. Kingsley insists that the gunman spotted Marley. Come like a Bob Marley specifically wanting you know. Come like a Bob Marley and come for on a personal, a serious level, you know. Watch this now. Bob Marley was tucked in a corner immediately, you know. Instead of the dirty gunman shoot the man that was close to him, the assailant sprayed the fire randomly across the room. So that means they want everybody dead. A bullet grazed Bob Marley across the chest, ultimately lodging in his left arm. Dan Taylor wasn't so lucky. The band manager was left with five bullets scattered across the torso and leg. Oh my God. The man pick up whole paron, you know. This is one, you know. Yeah, man, Dan Taylor pick up whole paron. Bob Marley was so lucky, though. And the other rest of them. But I tell you, this is one to pick up whole pa. Him the closer to a gun boy, you know. You understand? Him the close to the gun boy. That's a Dan Taylor I'm talking, you know. Yeah, man. So in pick up whole heap of rounds, viewers and sub. Sad situation. I tell them, boy, I nah lie. Boy, oh boy. Moments later, a blood soaked Marley joined his bandmates where they waited for four to five of them jump into a bathtub. It wasn't long before they heard a vehicle pulled outside. Rita Marley, who had just arrived home, was shot in the head. As she exited the vehicle, one inch from the brain, her son Ziggy Marley later said, Boy, I saw Rita Marley lucky man. One inch from the brain, you know. Almost Rita Marley dead to blow out. Wow. Luckily for Rita Marley, she survived. It's believed her thick dreadlocks slowed the bullet enough to save her life. Yeah, man, the dreadlocks save her, man, boy. I'm mean, telling her, boy, like a most her head shoot off. The attacker went from one room to the next, spraying bullets indiscriminately. The firepower the attacker were wielding was immense and the home was littered with bullets holes. After Rita Marley was shot, the gunman left as quickly as they had arrived. As Rita Marley rushed into the room and the first thing she asked was whether or not her husband was alive. Yo, Rita Marley loved Bob Marley star, love her husband. May I tell a man, little more she dead, little more Bob dead, little more the other rest of man them drop out. But God, still I see I was at the doorstep man for protecting people them. You see me I say, all dirty niggas have a go. 
You don't know, sir. That was a night Bob Marley get shot, man. And the rest of people, them, man. Sad situation. Thank God the legend survived and become a bigger legend in our world. You see me, I say? A jar works, man. Baga Things Media right. TV, oh, oh, man. Oh, 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 Thank oh, you for watching. Make sure you share it. Make sure you subscribe. Press that notification bell to stay updated, man. Jamaican assassin killing all names. Urban legend. Jackal. Out. Jackal. Out.